thank you very much for coming tonight and for the support you, you give to me while I'm in prison in Sudan. 1997, just I found out from some friend, the Mukhabarat or Sisis, they went to them and asked question about me or they showed them, they showed them my picture. And it's continued like that up to 2000, the year 2000, I met with them in person. They came to my house, knocked the door, then they showed me their badge, and they said the word, this is the first time, they said, we are the Muhabara. Actually, just me, they followed me everywhere, like my shadow. On the night of uh, September 11th, they came to me and they asked me if I know the people who committed this, uh, this uh, action in the United States. And since, since all that period, my wife, she had a cancer. she has been in the hospital so many times. And I was in pain and sorrow because my wife is dying and my mother in Sudan too, she's sick. And I live with all this pressure here in Montreal. I did my trip to Sudan. I saw my mother, she's very sick. And just uh, supported her. Spent with her around six months. After she became walking well and she's cured after the operation, I planned to come, to come back to Canada. I made my reservation to come back to Canada. Somebody came to me. And he introduced, him, introduced himself to me, he said, uh, from the Sudanese intelligence. And, like, he put the gun here. He has his shirt to let me to see the gun. They took me like that and they threw me in the car. In the way they started, to ask me questions, why, well, what is the reason I came to Sudan? I say this is my country, it's my mother is here, my brother, my all my family is here. <laughs> and I'm basically my sick, my sick man. I went inside the building, it's a scary building actually. They saw me pillow on the ground, they say stay here. It's very cold, uh, air conditioned with the remote control. They put it very high, small cell. One meter by two meter and a half. And they locked me up and they went. Then after 12 days, this is maybe like 17 days now, the interrogation is everything. That will transfer me to the prison. This prison is well known for United Nations and for Canadian government. This like one month, even it's my family in Sudan, they don't know where I am. Actually, my children here, they, they don't have no knowledge about where I am, what is happening to me. One, one evening, the two men, they came to me, they opened the cell, and they said, look, it's Mukhabarat of Canada coming to talk to you. And I said to two guys, the Canadian guys, they say hi. They say, one of them, he said, he told me, I told you, in Montreal, you will see, and now you will see. In this moment, I don't have no doubt the Canadian intelligence involved in this matter completely. One of them, he said, look, you are not a Canadian, you are a Sudanese, you're going to stay in Sudan forever, the Sudan is going to be your Guantanamo you mentioned.
I'm in the Brisbane. I don't, I, I don't mention that I've been beaten with a horse. My hand sometimes tied up in the front door, kicking, spit on the face, harsh horn. This is very scary. This is for me. I'm never gonna forget it. In 2005, I received a call from the Sudanese intelligence. They said they received some documents from, the, from Canada. And that morning, yes, I went to the, the Canadian embassy and I told him, look, now the Sudanese, they call me and they asked me to, to pick some paper. How come this paper not to come to Canadian embassy to come to them? He said, no, maybe it's because this paper may be from the, from the, the intelligence of the government of Canada. Just go see them. I said, no, no, no. Call them and ask them what this kind of paper. Then he said, no, don't miss me this time. Just, I went out. I see the man come and shake my hand, two cars with like four people in arm, automatic machine gun. And just surround me, I say, okay, got in the car. He said, why? He said, you are arrested. Then he said to me, the CIA passing by Sudan are commander to, to, to arrest him. CIA. And they sent me this time, it's, uh, it's, uh, uh, like 70 kilometers north of Khartoum. This jail on the river Nile, and it is made for the people who the Sudanese intelligence won't forget about them. They throw them in that place and that's it. I spent like seven months in that place without nobody asking me nothing this time. I don't know what is the reason I am there. Just continue like that. The official from the Canadian Embassy who wanted to receive me. I went to the headquarters with them, with them that morning. And I found uh, the Canadian consul. Take me in his car to the, to the Canadian embassy. I made two call for my family here. It's the first time I met. I I have connection with my children, with my family. And continue like that, just till in the end, like when uh, my uh, lawyer Yafar Hamid, we talk to each other and we decide, me I stay, I go to stay in the Canadian Embassy for my own security, because there is a big possibility of revenge from Sudanese or like American or Canadian, maybe they ask them to uh, to arrest me again. I mean, just, uh, I'm really, I wish what I went through, I don't want this to happen to somebody else.